Wow, we're, uh, we're, it looks like we're gone live already, Steve. And we're live now. Okay, so, so, uh, Duncan, what a day I've had today. So I had the opportunity today. I said to my wife, I had to, I had to meet with two people, one at nine and one at one, one thirty. And uh, I sat at the river almost all day praying and looking at the scriptures and studying and uh, what a beautiful day out there I don't know if anybody's watching from any province that maybe had snow lately <laughs> but we got good weather <laughs> and I don't want to jinx it if you can do that what about you oh it was beautiful I sat it on my balcony all afternoon and just it was gorgeous 21 degrees were you, did you go down to your trailer? Not today, no. No. Right on. Ships are up and down the river today, though. No? Saw two of them. Oh, did he? The river's open. It's time okay. for the trailer to open. Okay, so I got to go get my shoes, because I'm getting comments about no shoes. <laughs> oh. Yes, sir. You know, I, I didn't know you had to wear shoes, Duncan, in church. <laughs> I got my shoes on, everybody. As people are coming on, Rod's got his shoes on. That's better for you. Right? So, how's that, Denise? Oh, my. Steve, how was your week, Steve? You got to turn her on. Pretty good for one day. Turned it on. I think it should be on. Hello? Yeah, yep. It's on there, yeah. Yeah, no? So far, so good? Yes, eh? Hey? Yeah. I got stuck inside, not like you guys. So, you, you must have heard Duncan a few minutes ago on, on a question that we've got to ask. And we're going to get ramped up on that now, and then we'll get into our passage. And so, keep your mic on. I'm going to get Duncan to get into what he got into a few minutes ago. And maybe I'll get you to weigh in also with that. So, uh, Duncan, you said that we should ask a question. You go. Well, lead, lead up to that question. In here, what we're looking at, the, the writer there reminds the people, or reminds those that he's, he's writing to, about Israel's failure to enter the rest. Mm -hmm. Israel had come out of Egypt under the blood of the Passover. They had walked through the Red Sea on dry land. They knew the provision of God for food and water. Hmm. The Bible says they're clothed in where their sandals never wore out. God looked after them. Yeah. But they never entered into the rest that oh. God had for them. Yeah. Because when it comes right down to it, they didn't trust God. Hmm. God said, I'm going to bring you out of Egypt. He didn't stop there. No. He said, I'm going to bring you into the promised land. Yeah. They didn't believe that God could do that. Yeah. They doubted when they saw the giants, they doubted that that could mm. happen. And they didn't trust God. And because they didn't trust God, the results of that failure to trust God was they died in the wilderness. Yeah. And so I think a question for all of us is, do you trust God? Yeah, come on. And, and that's a question that I know we would quickly say, well, yes. Yeah. 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 Well, then out of that comes the second question. Does your life testify to the fact that you trust God? Yeah. Or are you troubled over the pandemic? Are you upset about all of the things that's happening in our world today that's so diametrically opposed to the Word of God? Yeah. Are you afraid that you're going to get the mark of the beast by taking the vaccine because yeah. all of these questions, yeah. how you answer them yeah. will ultimately answer the fact, do you trust God? Amen. Because God said, I will never leave you nor no. forsake you. Yeah. Yeah, that's that, good. That, that's his promise. Yeah. Yeah. And so, th so this is a question. He says, be diligent, yeah. the writer here says. You, that means you put everything that you have into it. Hmm. Yeah. This is not just something we do Sunday morning. No, no. If this is not something that is the utmost priority in our lives, then we've got a God that's 
over God. Yeah. And yeah. we got a problem. Yeah. Like we, we've said before, the children of Israel, they came out of Egypt, but Egypt never came out of them. Hey. And and not only that, but Duncan, like we need to we need to connect it to the to this culture. I mean, we we have like God have led us out of sin, but lots of times sin has not come out of the Christian. What we well, see, I think we miss that part of being saved. Yeah. When we come to the place of realizing that we're sinners who need a Savior, and Jesus Christ is that only Savior, and we ask God for Christ's sake to pardon our sins, if we were to die the second after that, we're going into the presence of God. Yes. But if we continue to live on this world, in this world, there's, go, there's that ongoing process of us growing up into Christ. Yeah, come on. And so there's salvation, and then there's sanctification. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Bible talks about God bringing Israel out of Egypt. Yeah. But they never got Egypt out of Israel. No. No. Israel never got rid of the ways of Egypt. Yeah. And when Moses was up on the mountain, did come down. What did they do? They did exactly what Egypt did. They made a calf to worship. Yeah. And said, Israel, this is your God. Yeah. And yeah. so the, the child of God, <laughs> when you come to Christ for salvation, it's a done deal. Yeah. Yeah. But God don't want you to stay there. No. He no. wants you to become like his son. Yeah. Amen. He wants us to be transformed, yeah. not yeah. conformed to the world. No. Amen. He wants the fruit of the Spirit to begin to be evident yeah. in our lives. Come on. So, Steve, yeah, we're, we're going to get Steve to weigh in. You can't see Steve on the camera, and it's hard for us to do that. But what's well, so amazing, he's here, and he loves the Word of God. And I see him light up sometimes when we're talking. So, Steve, what's your thoughts on just what we were talking about then? Wow. Um, there's a lot <laughs> that I can probably say that I think it's so true that we don't rest. We don't know how to rest as believers. Mm -hmm. um, we think there's things we have to do. Oh, gee, we just gotta trust Jesus. That's it. Um, and we're trying to do other things. And quite often we think that whatever ministry or whatever thing we have to do, we're doing in our, we end up doing it in our own strength. We, think we gotta do it ourselves. Yeah. Um, and, and I'll speak, I guess, from my own experience, if that's okay. Uh, the past couple of Sundays on Sunday nights with the youth, we've had a smaller crowd. Yeah. And, and the first week I was like, oh, I was really bummed out. Yeah. I, I was really, I was like, oh, God, what am I going to do? And he's like, just do what you're going to do. Yeah. And trust me. Yeah. And I, okay. So, because I, I was stressed about it, and then I just, no, I'll just trust him. And it was amazing the way it played out. Mm -hmm. And then last week, or yesterday, wow was the same thing, and, and we, we just kind of didn't follow any, we just let the Spirit guide it, and there was yep. some really good talk, and some really good things came out of it, just by doing it His way, yeah, and, and, not, and not stressing about just resting, and okay, God, just whatever happens, it's your, it's your plan, um, but yeah, we, we, we want to do it our way, and, and, and we hang on to those things, yeah, I was thinking of the passage, in, it's Romans 12, that, um, about what Duncan was saying about, we, not getting Egypt out of us. Yeah. Right? Um, it, it, do not conform any longer to the pattern of the world, but yep. be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect yeah. will. Yep. And, yeah. And, and, and I, I know quite often we get accused as, as believers of being brainwashed, but oddly enough, the Bible says that it's the world that's brainwashed, yeah. and we're the ones whose minds are transformed, and we're the ones who do not conform. Yeah. Amen. Um, and when we let go of the things of the world, all of a sudden we are free yep. to rest, free to just totally let go of God because we don't have an agenda all yep. of a sudden. Praise God. Amen. Amen. That's good. No, Steve, yeah. it, it, it's so true, right? It is. And, and the child of God ought to be living a transformed a static, magnet kind of Holy Ghost life that promotes Christ and Him crucified to a dark and a dying world. And their lives exemplify everything that Christ have done. 
And I mean, Israel, yeah, okay, so they walked out and they crossed the Red Sea. And, but I'm telling you, we've walked out of a lot. And we, we're, we've, we've hung there. We've hung our ass up at our conversion. And the better story that's told on how dirty the sin was is what we enjoy. And the reality is we need to be start promoting how good God is to keep us, sustain us till, the, till now. You know? Children of Israel add the word of God. God so, spoke to them yeah. from the mountain. Mm -hmm. They backed away and said, Moses, you go talk to God and uh, we'll, we'll hear what you have to say. Yeah. The church today, for a lot of it, they, whatever the pastor says is, is yeah. their diet of the word. Yeah. Yeah. And God's heart is grieved over that because he's given us this letter, this book that reveals himself to us. Mm. And he wants us not yeah. only to look at this sporadically and bits and pieces, he wants us to know this. He wants yeah. this written on the tablets yeah. of our hearts. Come on. And, and so we, we need to be into the word. Every, every single person, I've heard people say, well, Pastor, I don't read. Well, get one on tape and yeah, listen that's to right. it. Yeah. There's, there's no excuse today. No. We have the word of God. Yeah. And the result of those who have the word and don't listen to it yeah. is that they do not enter into the rest of God. Yeah, amen. And, and we need to air again the exhortation from chapter 2. We must give them more earnest heed to yeah. the things that we have heard lest we drift away. And then it says in verse, how shall we escape yeah. if we, if we I neglect? I know. Neglect is not, not using, not taking what's there. Yeah, amen. It, it's, it, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not taking into you what's yeah. there. You neglect it. Yeah. If you neglect to eat the food that's in the fridge, you'll get hungry, you'll get sick, you'll end up in the hospital, and if you're not careful, you'll die. Yeah. And if we if we neglect right. the word. Yeah. So so let me let me let me get some stuff going here for today's topic, and um, let me let me uh, Duncan, I I don't have this up in mind, but anyway, I'll read it. It's verse seven. We'll start there because you're. You're saying that we, we need the Word of God, and I just want to bring something up that I think, without a doubt, Hebrew talks about yesterday. Like, matter of fact, we will get, I think it's the last chapter, we'll, one of the verses that we'll look at, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But our topic today, or at least the opening remarks in, um, in uh, chapter 4, and verse, um, 12. verse 12, is it? Yeah, it's for the living word. But I wanted to start off with verse 7 first. He said, uh, and Steve, I don't know if I got that one up there. I think I do. Again, fix a certain day today, saying through David, after so long time, just as Ben said before, today if you hear my voice. And so that is so crucially important. Steve, if you throw up 3 and verse 7, it says, Therefore, just as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you hear my voice. Duncan, in 3 verse 15, Today, if you hear my voice. Now, we're going to start talking about the Word of God in a few moments. right? But I wanted to set the at least appetite to the place that this book in order to grow up get age up out of you be the child of God that Esau desires you to be you've got to hear from the voice of God today not yesterday that's not sufficient enough for today and not only do you have to hear but you have to heed yes you, you have to pay attention. You cannot afford to neglect. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because the Word of God, Duncan, it's, it's not only alive, but it actually works. It works. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, it's, 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 not, it's relevant. It, it is, and it's effective. The Word of God is. Yeah. And so we've got to trust, as much as we trust God, we've got to trust His Word yeah. to get us through today. Yeah. Right? 
Jesus told the early disciples not to worry about what they would say when they were confronted or brought in to speak to elders or having to give a reason for the hope that was in them. He said, the Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance the things to say. Yeah. If you're not into this book, the Holy Spirit's not going to bring this no. to your remembrance. No, amen, amen. Yeah, you need to there's remember. no remembrance there. Yeah, for sure. There's nothing there to, to, for the Holy Spirit to bring up. You, yep. you have been into this. Yes, and, and that verse that we were reading, uh, and, and you could throw it up, verse 12, uh, talking about the Word of God being living and active, sharper than two edged of sword, don't get it, it, it judges, it goes beyond word, right, which is so crazy because we're always into words, but all of a sudden, this word, it's living and active, yeah. it, it, it works, yeah. this word works, yeah. right, but it, it goes into the t thoughts and the intent. Yeah. It goes deeper than any spoken stuff. Yeah. Right? And this is how sharp it is. And everybody's included in this powerful word of God. This word is living. It brings life to dead sinners. Yeah. Amen. People who are dead in trespasses and sin, this word brings life to them. But listen now, for Christians who have got a bit apathetic yeah. or, or, or careless or tired, mm. it brings reviving yes, it does. life to yeah. them. Amen. And so if, if, if somebody's listened to us tonight and we feel, they feel a bit despondent and they don't feel connected yeah. or they feel out of sorts, they're not walking with God like maybe they did, get the book back yeah. out. Amen. Amen. Get into the book. Yep. Yeah. Get, meet God in the book, because he'll meet you in the book. Amen. And Amen. he imparts life to those who have come to the place where they're tired mm. or apathetic or whatever reason they've got to that place. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's, it's almost like God uses his word for our stubborn hearts, our rebellious heart. It, it just, it, it will ignite something that will pinpoint the area in which we're struggling. Bring it to light. It, it lights up our motives, our intents, and all that stuff, and revives us yeah. to be the child that we should be. Well, that's the great thing about God. He knows the thoughts. He don't only just know what we say. Yeah. He don't just see when we go wrong ways, but he knows the thoughts and our motives. Yeah. And so when you get into this book, the Holy Spirit begins to put his finger on some things in our lives yeah. that the whole that God knows that that's what's keeping you from the fulfillment of communion and yeah. fellowship. Amen. We may think it's this. Yes. God says, no, no, no. That's just the result of this. this yes. Here's the problem right here. Yeah. And God puts His finger on that. Amen. When we read the Word. Yep. Look at this verse. Verse 13 says, "And there is no creature hidden from His sight." But all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Yeah. Right? So, so, so what God does is it, it, he just cracks it open yeah. and it's all laid bare there. Yeah. And, and, and so there's nothing hidden and he knows whether we're sincere or not. And, and the beauty about it being into the word of God, for those of us who are in the word of God, we don't have to be fearful because we've been into the Word. We've come to know that He's a good, good he is, God yeah, amen. who loves us as our best interests as heart, but He loves us enough to put His finger on that which is crippling us. Yeah. The Bible says, whom the Lord loves, He chastens yeah. and rebukes every son. Mm. And it's for our good. So, but you, you're not going to know that if you're not into the no, book. No, that's right. Because you don't know God. Because yeah. this is where God reveals himself. Yes. Yeah. He, does, he doesn't send angels like he did to Moses. Yeah. yeah. Moses never had the book. No. So God sent an angel to reveal himself to wow. an angel. Yeah. Moses, God, God sent an angel to Joshua. And Joshua, are you for us or against us? Yep. Uh, but Joshua didn't have the book. Yeah. yeah. We, we have the mm. book. God reveals himself in the book. <laughs> yeah. And, and when he does... We don't have to worry about God putting a finger on something because he, we know that he sees something we haven't seen for some reason or another. Yes. And because he loves us, he says, man, we, we need to deal with this. Yeah, amen, amen. Because we got to conclude 
that Christ have accomplished the work that he came to do. Yeah. Christ have accomplished this. Yes. When he said it was finished, yeah. it was. So now we've got to hear the word, believe the word, obey the word, and share the word. Yeah. That's the task that's set before us. Yeah. We've got to look at God's word, and we can't live. There will never be obedience until we really get into the book to see what we should be obeying. Yeah. And it's not a legalistic type thing. No, because no. we've come to realize the love that God has for us in giving his son to die on the cross to redeem us mm. to himself. Yeah. Now it's, it's out of relationship. It's not out of legalism. Yeah. It's not out of duty. No, no. It's out of a desire to know this one who gave himself for us and loves us so much more. Yes, come on. So Duncan, I'm going to get you to read a verse. I'm going to get you to read verse 14. It says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Wow. Don't just do this on Sunday morning. No. This is more precious than life. Yeah. Yeah. This is more precious than anything else. Yeah. Hold fast. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mark four things, uh, Duncan, in mine. I, I love the word great there. A great, I, I don't know why they added that extra Greek word. I love it. But, but the, the, the writer decided, like, great eye priest. I love that. And then I love that he passed through the heavens. Yeah. I, 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 like he, he ascended, guys, so he's not dead. He's alive. He, he's been through the heavens. I love that they put his name Jesus there. So, so not only do you have the ascended Christ who intercedes for us now, but you've got the, the man, Jesus, in here as our priest. And then he says, Son of God. Yeah. Right? And so you don't only have the word great, ascended, Jesus, and Son of... You've got an high priest that in at least these four divine aspects is amazing in the sense of who we are coming to when we come to Jesus Christ. What's your thoughts on that? And I think the reason for the word great there, and I think if I was writing, I, I would have capitalized <laughs> yeah. the G. Yeah. Because, see, Israel have had I priest from the time of Moses. Yes. But this I priest. Yeah, because they never had the range that this one's got. This high priest yeah, yeah. is high and lifted up. Yeah. Like the cost for this high priest was a lot different than the high priest in there, right? Their high priest could go into the Holy of Holies yeah. once a year. Yeah. Our high priest, this high priest, went into the heavenlies and sat at the right hand he, of the throne of God. Yeah. And he doesn't ever have to leave. Mm. He passed through the heavens. Yeah. Right? A lot yeah. different than any yeah. other high priest. We have a great oh. high priest. So, so it, it, is a, it is so amazing. Now, what about, what do you think of the human factor here? Because what is so great about this is he's not just like in the heavenlies, but like he was one of us. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He, he, was, he was part of our everyday yeah. life. Yeah. And his name was Jesus. And uh, there's this striking emphasis here. It seems like, and I love the Bible and the way it lays out, but Duncan, like it just laid out that the importance of uh, not only that he was the second person of the Trinity, but he was one of us. His name was Jesus. And it says here, and I think, I, I don't know if anybody has ever taken the time to flesh this out. Yep. But he was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Yeah. I don't know if we want to go there. With that. No. We think of all the the temptations that we go through. Yes. And really, there's only three: it's the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Yeah. But. Whatever it is that we experienced him to, he did. He did. Yeah. And I, I don't think that 
I'm not sure we can grasp that. No. I don't think, I'm not sure that we, we want to think about Jesus being sexually tempted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's probably a stretch for us. Yeah. We don't want to think like that. No. But it says here he was in all points. I expect we mm. will have some people comment that that couldn't have happened, what I just mentioned. But it says here he was tempted at all points. Yeah. What about your translation? Does it make it any different? Than so, that? so that was in verse, for we have an high priest who cannot sympathize without with we our do weakness. not have a high priest. Oh, we do not have an high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are yet without sin. I always look at it, Duncan. The way that I look at this passage is, like if I was a straw, right? That's all. Just a straw. Nothing. And that Jesus was a steel rod. And the force of temptation coming against me to the place that it would break the straw, throw me out of the way, blow me down the street a mile. But that steel rod was able to endure all of it without bending. Whatever force was behind it, I could never tell out what force was behind it because I would have been swept away. But Jesus was not swept. He stands strong. So, so when I get it, I don't have an eye priest that can't sympathize because he would have felt the forces of darkness, wickedness, and the enemy greater than I will ever experience because I couldn't even handle it no. without him. And then he says, well, listen, when you get there, I'll, I'll, because I've been there, I'll help you find a way to escape. Right? And it, it, it doesn't say somewhere that you have not resisted unto death. I, I just, I'm, look it up, look it up, look it up. Right? That's a good one. But we're gone, we're gone, we're gone looking for something. All okay, with us. Let's see, it's in Hebrews 12 and 4. 12 and 4. Not surprises found here in Hebrews. It says, For consider him who endured such hostility mm. from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. Yeah. In other words, Jesus did. He did. He did. Yeah. Duncan, we don't know how much force was against that steel rod. I, uh, I've always tried to, uh, my, my Christology is from above when it, when it comes to studying Christ. And, and I know yours is too. Jesus came down from heaven. He was the second person of the Trinity. And I'm nowhere near what the Apostle John was. I mean, John couldn't even record the kiss because that would humiliate Jesus. Matter of fact, during the trial of Jesus, John had to... Uh, interweave Peter's denial because he, he couldn't have Jesus humiliated at all. But Duncan, when we talk about that he was tempted in all areas like us, it, it's overwhelming to me to think what force was behind it that this individual, still a man, 100% human, stood as a steel rod and resisted it all. Like, I just got to put up my hands. Yeah. All, and just the, all the force of hell. Everything, Duncan. All of, I mean, it was so intense that he sweat, as it were, drops of blood, Roger. Resisting. Yeah. 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 And we're all, you know, when it comes down to, you know what we're has to do? <laughs> to just be lights in the midst of a crooked and person first generation mm -hmm. yeah and that's what why it's so important to be into this book Raj. yeah amen if I could get one message across to my family or my church family I would say please get into the book yeah all of it yeah Duncan uh, some translation says 
that he was tempted in every every respect yeah. right in all things right uh, we've got somebody that knows like we're not going to I'm not going to come up against something that he you haven't experienced like and when you talk when you started you started to talk about trusting like ooh like sometimes we want to find someone to 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 not help us get out of something but condone our struggles yeah. where Jesus says listen I've been there yeah. I've I, I, I resisted that yeah. and I want to help you get out right and that is so powerful I've had people say to me pastor you don't understand you're not in where I am you don't live with what I live you don't understand yeah yeah we will never be able to say that to Jesus yeah no 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 there's an old song does Jesus care when my heart is I can't remember all the words oh yeah. it's course says, oh yes he cares I yeah. know he cares his heart is touched with my grief mm. when the days are weary the long nights dreary I know my Savior cares yeah he care he he's he's with us Roger yeah amen he's with us. so like he knew the temptations that if they were unconquered they would lead to doubt he knew that temptation. He knew the temptation of disobedience toward God, right? If it, you know that that yeah. that would lead to lovelessness, like that we wouldn't love the selfish stuff that we deal with. Jesus knew all of these areas, yet he stood in total resistance. Yeah. Boy, what a what a what a savior! The first Adam. Uh, if I was going to sing a song, I'd sing. Oh, and I don't know the words, but I'm overwhelmed with, oh, what a Savior. You might know the words. Oh, hallelujah. His heart was broken on Calvary. <laughs> yeah, his hands was nail pierced. His side was riven for us, Roger. Yeah, amen. Yeah. yeah. Duncan, three things. Guys, take your Bible for a second. I highlighted this today just before we went online. Verse 11 says, let us be diligent. I think, Duncan, you already brought that up. Yeah. It says, let us be diligent. Verse uh, 14 says, let us hold fast. Right? Our confession. We need to hang on to that, Duncan. We need to grip that. Hold on to it. And then verse 13 says, let us draw near with confidence. And um, yeah. I want to I bring up another topic. We, we've got on, we, we understand who Jesus is. Hopefully now you understand that. You understand that, that you can enter some rest. You gotta, get, you gotta get some things out of you. And may I bring up circumcision again, right? It's time to cut some things off, yeah. right? Or allow God to cut them off and everything like that. But uh, let us enter in with confidence yeah. to the throne of grace. Can I bring up or do I dare to bring up prayerlessness in the church? Well, I think it's uh, next, well, maybe on a parallel or a heathen level with knowing the Word of God is prayer. Yes, yeah. I think those two things, uh, the apostles said when there was a dispute about the widows not being served, they said, Let's find some guys to look after it. We will devote ourselves to prayer and the word. Mm. And, and I think that's still hot to be the main focus of the church today. I, th I, think we've, uh, I think we've relegated ourselves to programs for this. Yeah, and, pro yeah, and, and I'm yeah. not, not No, I agree, Duncan. I, I think we need to have discipleship classes and that. But I'll tell you, if we want to see God do something in the day that we live in, it's got to be God's people knowing the word and praying and praying the word. Amen. So if I made the statement to you tonight, prayerlessness is the root of all of our sin. Yeah, I think I'd have a hard job uh, disagreeing with you. Though. Yeah, isn't it, eh? Yeah. Right? Yeah. We, uh, when we do not give time each day to earnestly and believe in prayer, we are saying that we can cope with life without divine aid. Yeah. Matter of fact, and I, I hope I don't like, if you log off, if I notice that the numbers go down in a second, I'll know that I've offended you, but like I look at 
prayerlessness is uh, you're guilty of the worst kind of or worst form of practical atheism. Atheism. You, you really are, and, and this is where it was my thought. We believe in God, but we can't do, we can do without him. That's what we're thinking, right? Well, we're not going to pray. I'm not going to trust him for that. I'm not going to talk about him for that. And so we believe that there's a God, but still in, we never have him help us through each and every day. We think we can do without him on an everyday life. Every earthly relationship we have, whether it's with our children or with our spouses or with our family or friends, that relationship is built on trust. And if we don't have a relationship with God, if we don't take the time to know God through the Word and spend time with Him in prayer, talking about the things of life and the things that are we are being faced with and family that are wayward all of the if we don't talk to god about that is because we don't trust god to talk to him about it mm. we either don't believe he can do anything or he's unconcerned or we think we can fix it on our home yeah mm. and without trust we can't have faith because yeah. faith and trust yeah that's what it is. Yeah. And Hebrews chapter 12 says, without faith it is impossible, impossible, yeah. impossible yeah. to please God. Yeah. Like, Duncan, like which we talked about Jesus. I mean, the guy passed in through the heavens, right? He ascended. He was a man, but he's the son of God. But like, the crazy thing is that Jesus knew he had to pray. But he did, he did. Yeah. And he was the son of God, and he knew he had to pray for several reasons, and he did it gladly, we should say that, because sometimes I think we struggle a little bit spending time with God, or at least asking. We're so rational and so carnal, and depravity is seeping out through our skins. And when I say depravity, I mean our sinful nature. It seeps out through our skins. We don't trust God. We don't. We believe that there is a God. We want to go to heaven, but we have not drawn nigh to him. We've not leaned into him. Don't we receive mercy? We receive grace. We're coming to the altar, our throne of grace, and we find it for help in time of need. Jesus, he prayed. It was necessary, and it was effective when he prayed, and you and I should be in prayer. We should not be prayerless. And James tells us that we can be effective in our prayers yep. because he says the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man yep. avails much. But if we're not in touch with God and if we're not trusting God, our prayers are not... No. We may as well play the Buddha or Mohammed yep. or whoever. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're not trusting. We don't know him. We don't know him. We can't trust him. Yeah. Right? Yeah, no. There's no way we can't. No. So, so don't, let's recap. Everything is laid open. Bare before the Lord. Cracked open. So God knows more than what we say. He looks deep yeah. into the heart. Yeah. Intense. Yeah. Motives. Yeah. Whether we're sincere. Yeah all this stuff and we know that we've got somebody Duncan, like, nobody else is going to come for us nobody else is going to do for us what jesus done there's no other savior no nobody could no. nobody else can fit what to be the best what we need the greatest that we need nobody else will ever measure up to what he done if there were if we could have kept the law that Moses gave, but it came from God, but the law that we say Moses' law, to the letter, we still need a Savior. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. There still had to be a sacrificial lamb. Without the shedding of blood, there was no remission. That's another verse in Hebrews. I, I know. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not possible. And not the blood, and, and Hebrews also talks, chapter 9, that the blood of bulls and goats 
Yeah. Couldn't do it. No. Only yeah. the blood that John, when he saw Jesus, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of yeah. the world. Yeah. There was no other. No. Duncan, there were, se there were seasons in my life that I've been prayerless. And uh, I wasn't careful with, like, my former sin, what I came out of. Although I didn't lapse back into it, but I wasn't careful. I think prayer, it's, it's these roots that, that just gets caused. It's the root of all of our sin. When we don't have a communication and intimacy with God, it's easy for us to go back to Egypt. Right? Yeah. It, it is. Or, or it's easy to get caught up in things that, that the Christian shouldn't have been caught up in. We're carnal. Yeah. Like whether, the, whether we want to admit it or not, but without prayer, where there's prayerlessness in any Christian, there's carnalness. Carnality. It's got to be. It's got to be. Yeah. Right? Because we're depending on our own self. Yeah. We used to sing a song years ago, drinking at the springs of living water. Yeah. Happy now am I, my soul does satisfy, drinking at springs of living water, a wonderful and bountiful supply. Roger, every child of God needs to be at that spring yeah. several times a day. Mm. You don't have to necessarily stop everything, get down on your knees. No. You can be driving in your car, you can be washing the dishes, you can be bathing a child. You can be splitting kindling. You can be shoveling snow, cutting grass. Yeah. But we need to drink from the springs of living water. Amen. I got one more question before we go, don't. So we find grace to help us in time of need. Do you think that if we lived out this passage, if we were diligent, we hold fast to our confession, we trusted God's word to, to cut and heal right to the marrow of our bones or we were laid open and all that stuff we got this high priest that we know that was here yeah. do you think our needs if we were praying like we should is that uh, let me ask the question I'm, I'm trying to word it properly is is the need when prayerlessness is found different than the need when people that pray like, like, because I know now that I could have needs, and 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 they've only become natural needs. But when we pray, there's things that take priority, and the natural stuff is less important than the spiritual stuff. What's your thoughts on that, Roger? If uh, if we were living somewhere where we had to depend on a well for water, and you went there several times a day. You got your bucket. You brought the water. And it was all every time you went there was water. Yeah. And you came home someday. You're parched. You've been working hard. You're parched. But there's no water in the bucket. You wouldn't hesitate to take the bucket and go to the well because you've been there so many times. Yeah. You know you can get a bucket of water. Yeah. But if you haven't been regularly going there, and maybe yeah. you haven't been there for six months and it's been a dry spell, you may not have that confidence. So we can come confidently before the throne of grace yeah. and find grace to help us in our time of need because we're used to going there going and the well has never been dry. So there's this like timely resource, yeah. timely yeah. resource available for the child of God. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So we should go, guys, you probably need our prayers, like not because it's us, Right? Because we are... We need our prayers. <laughs> yeah, we're living this. We're living through this. Right? Yep. And we love God's Word. Yep. I mean, I mean, last night, my goodness, we what a privilege we got into in the sense of talking about God's Word and, and all that stuff. But, but I want us to... I want us to really come to God right now. Like... like not lightly, not casually. I've been, I've been, uh, I've been at moments in the last while, Duncan, that I, I've become, I don't know if overwhelm is the right word. I don't have a word for it. So if overwhelmed is the wrong word. It's only because I don't have a word. But I've discovered something about God 
only to conclude that even in my understanding, it's hard to explain. It's, it's new for me to view him like that, but still it, it's just overwhelming in the sense that I don't think I understood or understand God. He's such a vast, supreme being who's totally connected and concerned with my every movement. Never disconnected, distracted, but this radiant gaze sometimes burns within my soul, creates grooves that I can hang on to because he's such a wonderful God who cares about an individual. But when I discover it, I, I just think, God, I, I don't know how to explain you. I don't know how to explain you. How could I tell somebody what you just showed me? I can't preach it, I because I, I don't have words in my vocabulary, Duncan. I think you've experienced what Job experienced. For 30 plus chapters, Job and his friends are back and forth about Job's plight and all the things that he's gotten into. And Job says about standing before God. And Move your mic up a little bit. And all of that, he talks about God. And in the end of the book, God comes and begins to reveal himself to Job. Where were you, Job, when I laid out the morning and <laughs> all of this? And, and Job comes to the place and I got nothing to say, God. No. I've heard of you before. Yeah. But now I've seen you. And I put my hand over my mouth because I don't have words. That's what you're experiencing. Yeah. But I'm, I'm going to go to it. Yeah, I'm going to go to it tonight. And guys, we don't have this text for you. You need to fix your mic again because it's gone all crazy. Oh, this old mic. Yeah, I'm going to throw that in the garbage and get another <laughs> one. It says in uh, Revelation, Revelation chapter 11. Then there was given me a measuring rod like a shaft, yeah. and someone said. Get up and measure the temple of God and the altar. And I think tonight, guys, know you not that you are the temple of God. Yes. Know you not that you're on the altar as a living sacrifice. John here is told to take the rod and he's told to measure the temple. God, we're to measure ourselves with the word of God. Yeah. Duncan, there's, there's two things I think that comes to my mind in comparing. There's inferior when we compare, right? Or superior. Yeah. And that's both sins. Yeah. When we compare. If I compare my life to yours, yeah. inferior or superior. Yeah. Both of them are sins against God. That's but right. the reality is, he says, and measure the worshipers. Yeah. Measure, count them, right? And I think that we've got such a beautiful God that we, he, he don't want us to compare he wants us to come into his presence, draw near to him, and enjoy grace yeah. from that throne. And, and Roger, everything that we're saying here in these Monday nights that we get together, we're, we're, we don't want to leave anybody feeling, well, I, I'm not measuring up. I'm, we, we're here to tell you that God's got a better plan for you. Yeah. It's not legalism. Yeah. He, he doesn't want you beaten down or, or no. browbeaten. No. He wants you to come to know him. Yeah. But we've got to put something into it. We do. We, yeah. We've got to set our hearts to know him. Yeah. And he, when we do that, he begins to open it up. Yeah. And he feeds us. Mm. And he refreshes us. Yeah. Like the woman at the well, he gave her living water. He did. And that's what he wants to give to us. Yeah. The manna that the children of Israel experienced in the wilderness, the manna that God wants to give us, Roger, so much richer, mm. so much fuller, so much more satisfying. Yeah. And that's what he wants for every person, and especially for those who name him as their Savior. Amen. Amen. So let's pray. Let's ask God. Guys, I know I don't know. We don't know. We don't, we don't know where each other are, right? And, and so, but God does. We lay bare. Yeah. We lay bare before him. He's, yeah. he's all-knowing. Yeah. He's an all-knowing God. 
knows our intents, motives, thoughts. Forget the voice part. Don't use your voice right now. He knows deeper than that, yeah. right? And because um, isn't it out of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth, the mouth speaks. speaks. Fill right? your fill your fill your heart with the word. Yeah. So would you pray? Let's pray for people. Father, we are so thankful for the word of truth and life. God, you didn't just come here to make us better people. You came to transform us, to come out of darkness into the glorious light of the gospel, to be freed from the bondage of sin and Satan, to be liberated, to be filled up mm. with you, Lord. You even sent your spirit to indwell us and to change us and to make us into temples that you dwell in, oh God. And so, Lord, today we're so thankful for your word. We're so thankful for the, the, the hunger that you've put in our hearts, Rogers and mine, for the word and other we believe, Lord, who are watching tonight. But, God, we pray this for every child of God that there will be a hungering and a thirsting for righteousness, that there will be a desire to be fed, to be filled, to be just alive in you. You've delivered us out of the kingdom of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son of your love. And we love you, Lord, and we want to grow in grace and in the knowledge of you. We want our lives to be filled up with you. We want to be living testimonies, bright lights in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. God, we know things are going to go wrong and things are going to go contrary to what your will is. God, you've told us that in your word. Help us to keep our eyes on you, not on these things. Help us to shine forth as a bright morning star mm. in the midst of darkness, Lord, mm. so that there will be a, a, a witness to the world that all of this stuff is not the right way. Somebody else is speaking a different language, and it's the language of heaven because the spirit of the living God is in us. So, Lord, be glorified. Bless those who are listening tonight. May the word spread and may people grow in you for your name we are doing this lord amen amen steve don't log off yet yet you want to hang in for one more minute we're going to give you one more little nugget i'm going to put duncan on the spot one more time just in case he feels like he shouldn't be <laughs> right last night duncan you said something to me that have impacted my life today this is my first day and uh, it, it 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 actually I actually felt it was prophetic as you spoke it. And I want you to finish tonight by letting these people know what God's after. And what I want to pull out of you just as we finish tonight is when Abraham went to the mountain. And you remember telling me that last night? Just yeah. tell that little story of what was expected and what, the, what, the, what happened when it out, and then we'll finish with that. Abraham and Sarah waited a long time for a son. When it didn't happen, they tried to do it their own way, and Sarah gave Agar or maid to Abraham. There was a child that came. God said, that's not the heir. You, Sarah will bear you a son, and you shall call him Isaac. And it happened after a number of years of waiting probably 20, and they had this child. Then one day, after, as, as Isaac was getting up to be a teenager, God said, hey, Bram, I want you to take your son, your only son, Isaac. I want you to Don't go continue to... Don't you stop for a second. Easter is coming. Yeah. Well, okay, go ahead. He says, I want you to go to Mount Moriah, and I want you to offer your son as a sacrifice. Immediately, the Bible says, Abraham got up the next morning, he took fire, he took wood, his son, two servants, and they left. And after two days' journey, he looked and saw the mountain. He said to the servant, listen to what he said, you stay here, me and the boys going over to yonder to worship, we'll come back. We will come back. Wow, wow. Okay? They went, they built the altar, Abraham did, he put the wood on, and he took his son and bound him and laid him on the altar. 
and he took the knife to slay his son. And when he was about to come down, the angel of God said, Stop, Abraham. Now I know that you trust me because you have not withheld your only son. Mm -hmm. And so I said to you, Roger, as I was reading that yesterday morning, I believe it's Genesis 22, I was hassed by the Spirit of God. What do you need to put on the altar? Folks, maybe you're listening tonight and there's something that you need to put on the altar so that God knows he has your heart. I think it's a question every single child of God needs to answer sometime in their life and maybe several times because things can happen. Mm -hmm. What do we do hide Duncan Perry need to put on the altar mm -hmm. so that God knows he has for it? Amen. Amen. Well, folk, God bless you, and may, may hopefully this video tonight inspired you. Easter is coming when God, God's son went all the way. Yeah. Nobody hold the knife back. He laid down his life. He, he gave stop. it all. It didn't, it didn't stop, stop. For him. It went all the he way. He went all the way, and he was the ultimate sacrifice. And may we surrender. Stop trampling what Jesus have done, but may we surrender completely to he him. He was nailed to the cross for me. On the cross crucified, crucified. for me he died. He was nailed yeah. to the cross. God bless you folk. Have a great evening. And I know this was a little bit heavy, but you know what? It's the word. God bless.